Hey guys, this is Jen with R JCT Rustic Homestead and I wanted to give you some more information about my bullet journal and how I use it. If you haven't seen a couple of the other videos, it's um, a dot grid pattern in a notebook and in, you can use just a regular notebook, but I decided I wanted the dot grid pattern for how I wanted to lay out my bullet journal and I really enjoyed it. Um, some extra tools, like this is a lectern 1917, but some extra tools if you're interested I just use a basic ruler um, for some straight lines because I'm a little anal like that I also just use a basic pen either blue black whatever I like that day and then I also use these get it to focus a little bit whoops you're upside down for me um, these rayon dual brush pens and there is a thin tip because I like thin tip things sometimes I like the sharpie thin tips but they bleed through the page a little more or they have a brush pen and personally down the road I might turn to a more calligraphy type pen just because that's the way my handwriting works better for me but a lot of people like these brush pens and Tombro is a brand that a lot of bullet journalists use but they're a little more expensive and I'm cheap sorry <laughs> but anyway I wanted to continue with my garden information and I had a fairly um, long garden video about how it incorporates with our meal planning and I didn't go super in depth compared to I was filming about a week ago and then after looking at the video I was like I can't <laughs> I can't put this quality online it just wasn't good quality because I'm new at the video thing and it it just wasn't good enough in my opinion anyway I wanted to add to the garden information and this is not so much for meal planning or cost savings like the other one was. This is more about the plants. So consider sticking with me because some of it's really interesting to me but um, it's not for everybody and I get that but still consider liking and subscribing anyway. Okay <laughs> so this is my garden 2019. And I did a little quote here, striving for success without hard work is like trying to harvest where you haven't planted. And that's by David Bly. And I wanted a quote just to help solidify what this year, to, year is going to be. It's going to be a lot of hard work. But we believe in hard work. We believe in the value of hard work and what you can get out of hard work. I mean, I know those 10, 12 hour days at the office are really hard and they're stressful and sometimes you don't think it's ever going to end and it's easy to complain about it but when you work hard and you invest in something that is just more rewarding than anything else and it's really apropos I also wanted something for harvest because we're planting a garden and we hope to harvest the produce from it and with our hard work we can also harvest produce that we have grown ourselves on our farm and have that personal gratification it's not anything i can really describe it's just really nice to sit down for dinner and know that the stuff on your plate that you're eating that you're feeding your body has been sown and cared for and harvested by you and your farm so anyway that's my little soapbox moment <laughs> okay so these are that if you heard that moaning that was my dog I'm sorry <laughs> um, she's a little opinionated today okay this is my garden for the year hopefully and hopefully I can get you in here okay these are the plants that we are planting and then I wanted the days to maturity now that will be a little different for certain things because I winter sowed some of these and I'm not gonna know when they germinate so I won't know the actual days to maturity but I'm a numbers person so it helps me to see how the garden will um, like produce or like when it'll produce I guess is a good way to put it I also put this little chart there's a lot of it, it gets overwhelming sometimes and I may have gone a little overboard with this but if you look up companion planting you'll see that some vegetables and fruits do better when planted with a different vegetable or fruit than others some of them supposedly don't do very well at all but 
you know, the more I'm researching, the more I'm um, watching things. Like, if you guys have ever heard of Roots and Refuge Farm, she has a good video on there about companion planting and how it's not just planting all of your beans with all of your broccoli. It's interspersing the beans or the broccoli throughout the garden so that the pests don't target your whole bean crop. You know, if you put them in different places, then the pests might find one area, but they can also be masked. Um, their smell can be masked by other plants in the area if you kind of like intermix them together. So I just wanted a chart so I could look and see without having to look it up online every time about what plants grow well with my core plant. You know, these are my seeds. This is the days that they will mature, but what plants are better planted together? So that's my list. And then we go to this page. Winter sowing. It's something new for me. I've not done it before, but I'm really looking, liking the possibilities. We'll see if it actually happens. So this is my winter sowing if I did it. These are, that's the gold date and the actual date. So I had, today is March 1st actually. And um, <sighs> I would really like to plant some more that needs winter sown, but my, <laughs> my, um, the soil is frozen currently, so I can't do that because we've had a wicked winter and everything is still frozen. So, um, this helps me keep track of what is working. Sometimes winter sowers start earlier, sometimes they start later, and then they might have more, they might have a different, um, result, but depending on when they, s um, planted, but then nature is very amazing it will compensate if you give it like soil moisture and some heat i believe that your seeds they, they they'll catch up it's just it they want to survive and i got mi gardener seeds and i've heard of great germination rates with them i've not heard of them being used for winter sowing but we'll see what happens so some of these plants i'm going to direct sow in the garden and what that means that instead of um pre-growing them before planting them like your tomatoes and peppers they take so long that you really need to start them early like I'm sure greenhouses have several plants already like to a certain point um but direct so is like the beans I know the beans will be fine I planted beans last year they did great for me I'm just gonna plant them directly in the garden and then this I may or may not use number of seeds how many did I plant how many germinated I was probably getting a little too carried away <laughs> on my information, but I wanted at the time to know what kind of germin germination rate I was getting. And also, um, like all, a lot of these seeds are from MI Gardener, so if they do have a good germination rate, I can give a review on that. And it's more feedback for MI Gardener. And then I left an area more so for notes because I don't know how this area is going to grow like um oh the sorry i'm reading upside down i know the sugar or the the regular peas they supposedly do not transplant well but i did start them a little early in the milk jugs just to see if i could do it i spaced them a little more apart so maybe i won't damage the root system as much as like the potato or excuse me the tomatoes and peppers i just I didn't really know what I was doing. I've had some people just plant a few per milk jug and then I've seen others that plant a ton per milk jug and then like kind of just weed them apart with their hands and then plant them in their individual pots. So we'll see what works for us. So that's how the chart for me is working. And then here's our plants, which check out the Facebook page. I did list them all on the Facebook page at some point or another. But we have two different kinds of beans. And I wanted, I know this Blue Lake did really well for us, so I wanna make sure that we have that again because like I've said before, we go through a good amount of beans and we had so many last year, I gave away probably a two to three gallons worth of green beans, but we're getting short and maybe I shouldn't have given so many green beans away. So that also factored into my garden planning that I talked about earlier. But this black valentine bush bean, it looked really interesting and I wanted a second variety to try. This will, The blue lake will be our core bean, but the black valentine will just kind of be like an extra. 
either just experimental to see how we like it, or we can sell it at a farmer's market or friends and family. The other thing with the blue, black valentine is that the seeds, if you let them go to like drying out point, they're a black bean. So we could use those as a black bean alternative, black bean salsa and corn salsa or... I don't know what else you look I'm probably we're probably not gonna eat too many black bean burgers because we like meat but we'll see it just looked interesting and fun um and it's also a bush bean and I don't want to mess with the trellising I don't know that they produce any better or worse but yeah the trellis is a lot of work it's a lot of space and the bush bean to me just it seems to work better for us we'll see maybe down the road we'll try a, a vining bean um if you have an opinion write it down in the comments and in, in the below <laughs> um then we have a calabrese broccoli of the choices for mi gardener it just seemed like the one that was going to work for us the best and produce a good amount and then we have a tom thumb dwarf pea um it may not there were a few different choices but this was like a bush kind of pee I think it only gets like 18 inches tall and again since I don't really want to trellis and put up the space and the work I mean don't get me wrong the garden is gonna be a lot of work I'm not sure if I'm ready for it but I'm what I didn't want to have to mess with the trellising I'm gonna have to do that for the loofah gourds down below but I didn't want to do it for the beans and the peas and then rainbow makes carrots I've not had good luck growing carrots but I thought why not it's 99 cents I'll try again and then I can we can eat them fresh we can chop them up and freeze them and they're rainbow I got the rainbow ones because it's just cool people who doesn't want a purple colored carrot um salad bowl mix I like that now that I'm older I guess I can say that maybe I don't like the straight iceberg lettuce as much as different colors and and um I don't know depths of lettuce <laughs> I don't really know how to describe it but I have come to like the mix um it, and it, I don't know if it has arugula or rom, um, romaine or whatever but um I like the mix prefer it um okay it's golden zucchini black beauty zucchini these two we pretty much planted last year I know the black beauty zucchini I can't remember the name of the yellow type zucchini they exploded nobody told me or okay maybe they did and I just didn't pay attention how much zucchini explodes and I toyed with never growing them again because we got zucchinied out but I'm gonna do it again so we can eat some fresh I did freeze some but it just doesn't cook up the same way um maybe you guys have a suggestion I chopped it up and froze it like I do everything else like I'm not a canner yet it kind of scares me <laughs> to be honest um because that is a lot of risk I'm putting a lot of food in a process that may or may not work and then I <laughs> I actually saw a show one time where the can like blew up in her face and it was like it was a fake story it was just a tv show but that has always scared me from canning but anyway the zucchini we'll grow some we gave a ton away because like I said they blew up and they just they oh it was crazy it was a forest of zucchini and we gave a ton away but you know this year once again if we're looking at a cash crop option you know a lot of people like zucchini especially fresh from the garden and not just from the store because the store just isn't as good a quality they try you know they want to bring fruits and vegetables to a community but it's just not the same so um that's the other thing with the garden uh, we want to grow what would um last us for a year say but we can also offer some for sale to um a community or to people looking for locally grown food and then that's a little bit of a cash income that can help pay for some of our expenses either with the garden or if we need a new tiller for the garden colton actually uses a tractor but you never know um you know it's just a little source of income if we can and if not it's not the end of the world because and my gardener believes in feeding people and teaching people how to feed themselves so the seeds them were not that expensive what's going to be expensive about this is the work 
Okay, I have to apologize because I'm having some technical difficulties, um, or <laughs> I'm technologically challenged. Moving on from zucchini, um, tomatoes. I want tomatoes for sauces and diced tomatoes for different casseroles and things, or chili, so other soups. And once again, it's going to be a lot of work. Um, oh, tomato paste is another thing. If you cook it down, you can get tomato paste. But um, it's going to be a challenge. I like them fresh, Colton not so much, so we'll see how much we go through. I planted a ton because I'm doing that winter sowing thing. We'll see how much um, we actually produce. I If they all germinate, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I'll probably offer the starts as... Um, for sale on our Facebook page so if you're in the area check that out keep posted um, if it, you're interested in the Amish paste or the Marion uh, Amish paste seems to be like the go-to tomato for canning and or one of I should say and the Marion tomato seemed like a more versatile tomato it's a little larger than the Amish paste and it seemed to I mean you can eat either as a fresh eating tomato I'm sure but um, it seemed a little more geared towards eating and then that's also another cash crop option. We can sell the plants or the actual tomatoes. And then we have Purple Beauty pepper and the Serrano pepper. I wanted a sweet pepper and um, I don't know if you checked out our winter sowing video, the seed starting one, but I wanted a sweet pepper and I wanted them all. I wanted like orange and yellow and red because I like that color and variety, even though they kind of all taste the same. But um, in the end, I had to be realistic and only choose one. It's not like because the seeds were super expensive. But if I start plants, I don't want to waste the seeds. I mean, there's like probably 20. I think there were 15 in the seed packet. At least it said 15, but there were actually probably more like 20 or 25. But there's no sense in me wasting that seed. It might last for another year or two, but I don't want to be wasteful like that. That's just not my character. Anyway, and I waste enough other things that I don't need to waste somebody else's seed. So, and then the Serrano pepper was a hot pepper, and I could have just done like a jalapeno pepper, but I wanted something a little different. It does go like red to yellow and orange, and the green and the red I think are the hottest, and then the yellow and orange are more mild. So, if I can get them to the yellow and orange stage, I'll probably harvest a lot more then because we're not super hot peppers and I think the Serrano ended up being a little more hot than the the jalapeno and um we'll see what happens uh you <laughs> stay tuned you might um get like a spice overload or something okay Texas early grano onion I may have chosen the wrong type of onion there's um short day and long day onion and I can't remember what's what for our area, we're in zone 5A, I think. And um, I have a feeling I chose the wrong one, but we'll see. I did winter sow, though, or I'm going to winter sow them. I haven't done them yet. If my soil wasn't frozen, I would have done it today. Um, but I go through a ton of onions. And yeah, they're not super expensive at the store, but I want to grow them. I, <laughs> I just want my own onions, and I want the experience. And then we have garlic, and like I said in our meal planning to garden video, garden isn't garlic isn't super expensive, but you know if I can save a few bucks over the year, or sell it and or sell it, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna sell everything and then buy from the store. That's just kind of stupid, but um, I'll save what I can, and if it, and I'll do surplus for hopefully the year, and hopefully it'll stay good. But the rest I'll probably offer for sale. But if I don't start garlic, it's not the end of the world because I can get it pretty cheap from the store. And I also should have planted it last fall, but that doesn't didn't happen. And plus, our garden isn't really conducive to planting garlic in the fall because we till it up with like a tractor in the spring. So I can't plant things in the fall that are going to get smashed and ripped apart by a cultivator in the spring it's just not going to work i might try to do something with our perennial garden but i don't really know that i can plant garlic next to fruits i guess i could try it and see what happens but yeah i don't know yet um ambrosia sweet corn 
that was just the kind of sweet corn that sounded good. We like the bicolor, or at least I like the bicolor sweet corn. I don't think Colton really cares what color the sweet corn is so long as he can eat it. But um, we have a backup with his family if our sweet corn doesn't work. We had problems with moles last year and Raisin Dog got one, I think, maybe two. But the moles came through and ate our seeds. I'm debating about winter sowing them, but considering that I'm low on containers, I might just have to plant them directly into the ground. And I also don't want to damage them. I think I have 40 seeds, but I think we would also consume all that in a year's time if they grew properly. But if the moles get them, it might be another story. Um, I might have to um, call Colton off of a mole hunt of some sort. I'm a little scared about that. Anyway, um, Indian corn, that's a cash crop. If I can sell it as decorations in the fall, that's my goal. We'll see what happens. Um, I do have to be careful about how I'm planting the Indian corn and the sweet corn because if they pollinate at the same time, then they're doing what's called cross-pollinating. So I won't have straight sweet corn or straight Indian corn. I'll have like a mixture between the two, and that's just not cool. It probably wouldn't taste very good. The Indian corn might be fine just because it's something for aesthetics even though it is a crop that you can probably mill to flour and, and grits or hominy or something like that. I was researching. But I want our sweet corn to be sweet corn, so I have to plan accordingly of how that's going to work. And then um, the other page. Sorghum broom corn. If you didn't see our other um, video on our meal planning with our garden, the sorghum or broom corn is also, or broom corn is also called sorghum. You can make sorghum syrup from the stems and leaves. You can press it at a certain point in its growth stage, or you can take, harvest the heads and the heads have the seed on it. It's not like a typical ear of corn that produces the stalk. And then there'll be like a, an ear of corn on it, like the Indian corn or the sweet corn or what you would see in the field. The sorghum, its commodity is from the stalks with the syrup or the heads. Now the heads have this uh, like a ton of seeds on them. You can either take the seeds off and use the heads as brooms. That's why it's called broom corn. Or you can, t well, you can also t keep the seeds and you can turn them into like popcorn. They can pop like a popcorn in the microwave or stove or however you do your popcorn. Or you can mill them down into a sorghum flour. And I have a friend that's gluten free and so I'm really um, interested in seeing how that's going to work for us. If we can grow it um, and if we can make it another cash crop or an, it, a source of income. And then I can also grind it myself for some flowers and some experimental things. Or I can sell the heads intact as decorations. That's a big thing for decorations. And my mom loves to decorate with the broom corn, but it is kind of expensive. And I don't understand why other than... An, the demand for it. I mean, a lot of these things, as a farmer's daughter, I look at and go, squirrel corn is for what, 50 cents to a dollar an ear? That is just crazy. I mean, if we could sell all the ears of corn on our property for 50 cents to a dollar, we would be like millionaires. But we have to sell it by the bushel for livestock, usually feed processing. And it's sometimes hard to get three to four bucks a bushel. I'd have to look up to see how many ears of corn are in a bushel, but it's not anywhere near the price of corn for the squirrels. And the squirrels can fend for themselves. Moving on. Sorry, I got off on a tangent again. Loofah gourds. I'm excited to try these both here as like sponges and stuff like that. The, the loofahs that you see they are not from the water. They are actually from a garden. They do grow above ground. And I'm interested to try them for ourselves and also offer them for sale. Mary Washington asparagus. This is, a, um, this is an investment because... Investment, excuse me. Asparagus takes a while, like rhubarb, to produce. Um... Some of my rhubarb, it says it takes two years, but I've probably been able to harvest it the first year. Um, if the leaves start dying, I figure, hey, if the leaves are dying, I might as well harvest them. And then that's not taking too much energy from the root system because it's going to have to produce another leaf anyway. But the asparagus, 
asparagus in the stores is fairly expensive in my opinion maybe it's not to you but we can look at planting these seeds and then creating a field out of them to offer it at um, farmers markets or something else it's just kind of an investment for us we'll see where it takes us um and then these are my herbs oops excuse me slow boat cilantro mammoth long island dill italian oregano dark green flat leaf parsley i couldn't believe how much parsley i went through i make garlic toast for us for different meals and um i put parsley in it probably more so for color than actual flavor but um I just go through enough of it. Last year I was so excited I planted rosemary and, and lavender and it grew and I was excited to have it whenever I wanted it and I never used it. I did dry them but the rosemary I don't use very often in cooking and the lavender I never use. So it was kind of a silly for me to grow those things even though it was like a personal gratification thing. But those are except for the dill. The other ones I use kind of on a well the cilantro is more for um fresh and um salsas but you know the parsley and the oregano are things that i can dry and use down the road and it might last me like a couple years depending on how much the plants produce um so i've grown fresh herbs i've dried them and i have a better quality product in my pantry and on my spice rack than if i'd gone to the store and purchased it now, I'm not above that because that's what I've done in the past. That's what I will continue to do if these don't take off. But, you know, it's been really nice to have a jar of um, rosemary that I can pull from. And rosemary, the other spices aren't too bad, but rosemary can be kind of expensive. So, I, you know, it's a couple cents. But like I've said before, it adds up. And then the quantity I plant, I can also offer the starts as uh, for sale so I can send I can sell them for a couple bucks or maybe I could offer some fresh things um, instead of people having to go to the store that have probably been sprayed by chemicals again they want that fresh stuff they want the locally grown stuff so I'm hoping that maybe I can offer a few uh, herbs for people them um, direct from your local farmer and then I have two um, flowers i'm not expecting a whole lot out of them they were amazon seed purchases and i don't i use amazon for a lot of things but i'm not too hopeful about these i do want the plants but the reason why i went with the seeds is because i don't the the variety of plants that i wanted and i couldn't decide <laughs> what i wanted these seeds from Amazon they were cheap I figured I can see if they grow if they don't it's not too big a loss but you know when a plant is $15 at the nursery and I want 10 plants that's $150 plus tax that is just not in my budget I can't justify that I have to have that $150 towards something else so I put a couple bucks into seeds I'm going to try them and see what happens if they grow awesome I will be super excited if they don't grow I experience cost me a couple bucks you know and then I'll if something happens I'll let you guys know I'll post it on Facebook or YouTube or I haven't decided yet but we'll get there um, which brings me to if you liked this video please like uh, <laughs> if you liked watching it please hit the like button consider subscribing to our channel check us out on jctrustichomestead.com or Facebook um, it's just jctrustichomestead follow along as we farm and bring in farm life to life. <laughs> Thanks guys, have a great day.